Hello, Wine Mentalism, and welcome to George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones, the board game digital edition. Which, for those of you who've been like living under a rock for over the last 10 years, was it 12 years now? Uh, is the digital version of the board game A Game of Thrones based on the book by George R.R. R. Martin. In fact, it's actually based on the Song of Ice and Fire series as a whole and not specifically on the Game of Thrones TV show because of two reasons. Firstly, we all know how that ended. And secondly, because that would cost a fortune to license. Plus, the books are slightly more interesting anyway. Controversial opinions aside, uh, this is by Direwolf Digital who are sponsoring this video, so bear that in mind. Um, and although the name is very appropriate, Dire Wolf Digital, uh, they have produced other games like Eternal, Raiders of the North Sea, Root, etc. You can find a link to the game down below if you wish to go check it out. So there'll be a link down below in the description just below this video. Um, it basically plays like a strategy game, a bit like Risk except actually fun and with more than just random troop movements. Like everything you do in this is decided. You don't do it by dice. You do it by like choosing things. And there is more than just troops. There are other mechanics in play. So we're going to dive in with the skirmish mode. There is a tutorial, by the way, in the digital version, which is fantastic because I'm one of those people who only learns half the rules through actually reading the book and the other half I have to learn through play. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I only ever get about half the rules by reading them. The others I need to like actually hands on to actually learn. So we're going to go skirmish and you can see we get a choice of up to six people. Um, you play the game with up to six people. You can actually play it online as well if you want to play with people who are, you know, not nearby, which means it's fantastic for lockdown, I guess. Right now, that would mean it's very appropriate, wouldn't it? Because, yeah, sadly, board games are a lot harder to do right now. Digital versions, though, not so much. And we can play with six people. Uh, we're going to be playing against medium bots. And I'm going to, instead of randoming our house, we're going to be playing as the Starks. You'll also notice that there's no Tullys. There's no River Run. You can't play as them because they would get murdered being right in the center of the map. It would not be a fun position to play. So we're going to play as the Starks. Uh, the reason for this is because they play a little bit more defensively. It'll allow me to talk a bit more about the game as we go ahead. But with that said, we're going to start the game. And you'll see we're up here in the north. We have Greyjoys, Baratheons, Lannisters, Tyrell, and Martell in Dawn. So there's kind of a lot of mechanics going on. Uh, I'll try and explain them as we go. For round one, we played 10 turns. But for round one, I'm just going to quickly place down a few orders. And then we'll talk about them as they kind of play. So this is the order phase. You plan your orders and you put them down. One of the advantages of playing with AI by yourself means that you can probably whack at a game in 40 minutes because the AI just does its orders like this. Done. And that was showing me all their orders. Uh, if you play at home, the actual board game probably takes, I want to say it's like a three to four hour game. Okay, so that command couldn't be fulfilled, so it crossed it out. You gave a move command, so you're moving to there taken that castle. You've moved to River Run, which is a very important castle. River Run is like mustering value too. It's a stronghold. You can vaguely tell because they're like this kind of more elaborate castle with a kind of like white aesthetic as opposed to the beige yellow there. Uh, right. So we've got to do our orders. We've got a move here that I put down and a move here. You'll notice this move is special. It's got a little star. It's got a plus one. It means we get plus one combat value when we do that. Um, I don't know where you're moving, so I'm actually going to just hold off for now. Move you to here. So I've moved the ship, and our ship is now in the narrow sea. We'll confirm that. We now control the narrow sea. That's really important. As the Starks, your navy is incredibly important, and the downside is you're going to end up fighting. Oh, hello. Speaking of fighting, the Greyjoys and the Lannisters are fighting over a river run. And the Lannisters were going to defend it. But the Greyjoys used an ability to win. Um, there's a tracker here. I don't want to talk about this yet, but you made me. The Greyjoys are at the top of the Fiefdom Tracker. If you're at the top of the Fiefdom Tracker, uh, you can add plus one to a combat, which is what they did. 
And then if you're higher on the fiefdom tracker, you win ties, which they did. A bit cheeky there using mechanics in turn one that I was hoping not to have to explain for a while. Yes, it's a little bit of a complicated game. Hopefully you'll pick it up as we go along. I'm going to try and explain it as we do as well. Ooh, Tyrell's fighting Baratheon. Interesting. Um, these cards are basically like the generals they're playing. Each time you have a fight versus another player, you have to use a card. And they have abilities in addition to the bonuses they add. Okay, they take Blackwater Bay. You take Haranol. Okay, we have to play our move now. And we're going to move you to Moat Kaelin, which means we can take this castle. Confirm that. Now, we're actually not defending White Harbor. Like, we've not left anyone in White Harbor, which normally means that it becomes undefended. But we can spend a power, currently we have five, to keep control of it. It doesn't mean it's going to stay controlled. If anyone moves into it, they'll just get it. But it means that we will still technically control the land. And I'm going to say yes, because it's a castle. We can use it for stuff. You move into Flint Fingers, getting yourself a castle. They opted to retain control of that, which is a bit weird. Um, you chose not to do anything. You are moving to Old Town, which is a stronghold. You mustered, and we're going to muster. Um, this is a special thing. Uh, normally, when you use the crown, it allows you to get more power. But because I used the crown with a star, we can choose to muster instead and get more troops. This is important because I'm going to do this. Hey, ships are cool. What if we controlled the Bay of Ice? Now we have a ship there. It's great. Um, yeah, I think we'll produce a... Footman. So a footman is like your base troop. They're one power. Uh, each. Oh, okay. Things are happening. Each ship is one power. So this is the new phase. Um, the new turn. In the first phase of every turn, except for the first turn, you do this draw card thing. And you draw three cards. One from each deck. The first one we drew is mustering. Recruit new units in strongholds and castles. There's a reason everyone was trying to grab castles that turn. So, yeah. Strongholds, you get to do two. Castles, you only get to do one. So, here... We could get one. Here, we could get one. Here is a stronghold. It gets us two. It's a fancy stronghold. You'll notice that it's got, like, this, which is a garrison that helps us defend it if someone attacks. Because it's our, like, home region. Now, I'm debating what we grab. Because we could upgrade this footman to a... Uh, siege engine, which we could try and use to take Sea Guard, which is important because it's a stronghold, but it also has a power symbol and a barrel. Barrels are your supply limit, and they're important because right now we're hurting a lot. We have one barrel. Barrel's good. Current barrel situation bad. That's all you need to know. Um, mm, I would very much like to get that. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade you to a Siege Engine. I'm going to spawn a Footman in White Harbor. I can't spawn any more people here because we have three and we're only allowed one group of three. We're not allowed any more, so we're going to have to upgrade these people. Um, we're going to upgrade someone to a Siege Engine, I think, and then the other one to a Knight. Oh, no, we could place a second ship, which is probably a good idea. So if we place a second ship here, because I wanted to control that. I also want to control the Sunset Sea, although that might be a bit annoying because it can be attacked from so many different directions. And then we upgrade someone to a knight. Yeah. Yeah, you spawned a knight. Yeah, so many spawns from Greyjoys. The Greyjoys are an incredibly powerful faction. They've got some of the best generals. They don't get a lot of influence. 
Okay, the holder of the messenger raven chooses. Everyone bids on the three influence tracks. Everyone collects one power for each power icon in area of the control, or it has no effect. Um, the messenger track is this one over here. King's Court. Lannisters are in charge at the moment. They would like us to bid. Okay. Um, so... You know, we're going through a lot of the mechanics very quickly in this little playthrough. Uh, this is the three trackers, I guess. They're important because whoever is in charge of the Iron Throne chooses ties outside of combat. And it's also the turn order, which is very important. Uh, the fiefdom tracker, person at the top, can once per turn add plus one to a combat. And... In ties, you check the fiefdom tracker to see who is, like, winning. You'd be like, oh, you're above the person you're fighting. Yeah, you win. And then over here, in the messenger thing, at the top, if you're in charge of, like, the king's court, you can, like, look at the wildling card. I haven't talked about that yet. We'll get to that at some point. Um... Or you can, like, change an order after everyone has decided orders and revealed them. Which means that you can be like, oh, you're going to defend. Great. I will, uh, I'm going to attack somewhere else. Or we'll be like, oh, you're going to attack. I'm going to defend. Like, it's very useful. In addition, each of these stars means you can use a special order that's more powerful. Like, the Consolidate Power one that I used that allowed me to, like, get extra troops. That's because I have stars that allow me to do that. The attack thing that I didn't actually attack anyone but would have given me plus one power... That's one of these. So it's very important, in fact. Kind of really important. Um, I've only got four power. That's awkward. I think we're probably going to only spend three of it. So I'm going to place one here. Okay. It's a three-way tie. I believe the Lannisters pick. So they're going to pick themselves to be first. Yeah, there we go. Because they were current Iron Throne pick. Um... We are now second, though. They picked us above the Tyrells, because they're probably going to be fighting the Tyrells. And Fiefdom. Uh, again, I'm just going to place one power. Ooh. The Martells, the Greyjoys, and us. Uh, they picked the Martells. Damn it! Oh, it's fine. Provided we're above the Greyjoys. Please say we're above the Greyjoys. We are. Uh, the Lannisters fight the Greyjoys a lot. The Lannisters are actually probably the weakest faction in the game. And then the King's Court. I kind of want to put two in here, but everyone else is bidding low. So I don't know if I should bid just one. Um, I'm just going to bid one. I don't think I can afford to do any more. Okay, three-way tie again. Again, Lannisters get to pick. It's really important, that, like, position on the throne. Baratheon. Really? We're second, though. So they'll get to do that stuff, but we're second in all positions. Oh, great. Okay, uh, the Wildlings attack rest. You know what? We'll just throw all the mechanics at everyone watching. That's fine. Okay, so this is the other thing that happens. You know this symbol here? This little mammoth down in the, like, almost bottom left? Each time that comes up on a card, it adds to the Wildling tracker. Uh, they attack when the strength hits 12, or when this happens. When they attack, we will have to bid to help defend. And then you have to beat this number. This is just four. So it's likely that everyone together will bid four. However, if you bid successfully as a group, like we all put in one and two, etc., and we get more than four or four, um, whoever bid the most gets a thing from the card. We don't know what the card is yet. However, if we don't meet that number, if that number was like 12 and we all bid and we have a total of like five or whatever, the lowest bidder gets a negative, and there might be a negative for everyone else, depending on the card. Um, because it's only four, we're probably going to succeed, and since we're going to succeed, it only gives a bonus to one person, the person who bid the most. I'm not going to be that person. I'm going to bid zero. Yeah, we bid seven. Killer Crows may immediately replace up to two of his footmen anywhere with knights. So the Lannisters and the Greyjoys both bid two, which means the Lannisters are going to pick themselves. And then they get to basically be like, hey, we want knights. You know what? I would like to make an alliance. Me and the Lannisters, we're going to be tight. What about Baratheon? Because if we can get the Baratheons as well. Oh, wrong one. Ah. 
There we go. The Brathians are not going to attack us. The Lannisters aren't going to attack us. That means that we only have to worry about the Greyjoys. Now, diplomacy is a very important part of this game. And it's, I guess, more important if you're playing with actual people because you can never trust people. The AI is pretty reliable. So now we don't have to worry about the Lannisters here or the Baratheons here. And this is important because the Lannisters will be a threat if we start moving into um, the Vale. The Vale being the other kingdom. I guess, yeah, it's seven kingdoms plus the Riverlands. The Riverlands don't exist and also the Vale doesn't exist. Um, we can get the Vale because they're neutral, not because they don't exist. And if we get the Vale before the Lannisters and Baratheons do, we'll own it because they'll be like, oh, okay, sure. The issue for us as the North is Greyjoys. They are a really tough faction to beat. They're incredibly strong. Their only downside is that they don't have a lot of power. You'll notice they have one power at Pike, Seaguard, and then they kind of have to fight into River Run, maybe the Stony Sept, the Twins. Us. We've got Castle Black, Carhold, Winterfell. Arguably, maybe the Twins, maybe Seaguard. We're not as bad on power. Anyway, uh, orders. Um, we need to attack with a Siege Engine. So a Siege Engine is strength 4 when attacking a castle or a stronghold. I think it's 0 or 1 when defending. I can't recall. But also, if it is routed, it's just destroyed. Most units retreat. It just gets destroyed. So we have to attack with it. It's not really defending here. So I think we'll place an order. Here. To march. We'll place an order with the plus one here to attack. We'll place an order here with a minus one. We need more supplies. That's got to be like one of our aims right now. Because one supply, we have only have one place of a two and one place of a three. It's going to be very hard to actually make our armies strong enough. And then for you, this is a tough one because I don't have to worry about you. It's probably going to be a support in case we do get attacked here. And here we have a choice. We could move into the Sunset Sea. We'd have to worry about the Tyrells if they move up twice. Otherwise, we'd just own this. Oh, I actually used all our move orders. I guess that doesn't matter then. Um, You know what? Change that to just a support. And this will be the support plus one. Because that will support us attacking here and here. So support basically gives you the number you have here. The strength of this unit. And then that's plus one. So... Two ships, two times one, plus one from that, three. So we'd have an extra three power if we attack here. And this would give us that plus zero, so one. At Moat Kaelin defending. If we attack from Moat Kaelin, they'll probably get a bonus from whatever they do in Iron Man Bay if they support in Iron Man Bay, which they always do. Um, so my current plan is we will probably move a horseman in here. We'll move the siege engine and we'll see what else into Sea Guard and try and take it. But that depends on what they do. We're not going to be able to. If we aren't able to, then that's just the way the cookie crumbles. We could possibly jump down to the Eyrie. The Eyrie isn't actually that good. It's not a stronghold. It's just a castle. So I think we'll confirm that regardless. Let's see. Yep, they're attacking at a... Is that a minus one? What? What? Yeah, they're attacking a minus one from here. Okay. So their attack order... By the way, you can attack two different places in one order if you split units up. They're getting... Ah, they see they got a support from this. And the Tyrells choose to support them as well. You can support other people in combat. It doesn't have to be just you. Okay. Cersei, zero wins versus Patchface, zero. Because five, one. Uh, however, Patchface, 
look at an opponent's hand, force them to discard a card, and Cersei, you may remove one uh, opponent's order. Ooh. So the defense there is cancelled? That wasn't doing anything. Weird. And then retreated. They got rid of Sir Jamie Lannister. So this attack order, what are they going to do here? I don't know. I am really interested what they intend to do here. Because if they intend to attack and they send the knight two power, knights are two power, minus one, it'll be one power attacking. Which isn't much. I've got a support order that's going to be one power. I'm interested. That is a support, by the way. So they are supporting um, this territory. If they attack out of it, it doesn't matter. The attack will be in here. But if they defend, they will get plus one. I think this might be an opportunity for us to take Seaguard. Seaguard is so important. They're defending over here. Fine, good for them. Seaguard is so important. I think we try and take Seaguard. It's risky, but it's such a good territory and it's really hard to get off people. I think we go for it. So I'm going to take this unit and instead of coming down here or doing anything complicated, I'm just going to move Kalen. The minus one power doesn't matter because we're not attacking anyone. We're just moving in here. Oh, yeah, we don't have the... Okay, we don't have supplies to support that because we've got a two here. Right, okay, I get you. Ugh. Yeah, our supply situation's dire. Um, fine. Funny we'd split these ships up. These ships are taking our valuable two. Uh, we'll have to move this then because this is taking our three. So if we move the knight to there... That's now a two. That's a two, and this is a two. So we'll have to move one of these units because we don't have a third two. Um, we could attack here. Again, it's not worth it. They have one power, one power, plus one for the defense, plus one for the support. I think we either get the supply barrel to increase our supply or we get the power. And I've got to say, I think it's the supply barrel. Yes. So, while they're doing that, here's what supplies do. Everyone starts at two on the supply track, I think, except for us who start at one. But you can see that, hey, you get bigger and more armies. So, like, if you're six supply, you get a four and a three and a two and a two and a two. It's great. Anyway. Do your thing. Win your fight. Wow. And they retreated. Starfall now belongs to the Tyrells. Okay, staff all has been attacked by Martel with a minus one order. What is going on? Oh, they're supporting, I guess, but so are they. It's going to be two, four. I think I'm going to win this. Ah, you used the Red Viper, who is a four versus their one. Right. Also, these are going to cause casualties. That prevents the casualty. Swords cause casualties. So, there. Two cause casualties, one defend, one casualty is caused. Okay, where are you moving? You supporting River Run? Now's my chance. Okay. So here's where things get interesting. We know they have one unit in Seaguard. We also know they have one unit supporting, which means they're going to be strength two. If I charge in the siege engine, that'll be strength four. So we'll beat them by two. We can also look at their hand. Like, we can know what cards they have. So you'll see that they have a four here, who I am really scared of. Um, they have a really good hand. So, they could get that up to a lot. The issue is, however, if we don't attack, if we just attack just with the siege engine, 
We won't have anything to defend next turn. So I think we have to attack with everyone. We luckily have one power, by the way, which allows to keep Moat Kaelin. Yes, I would like to spend that. It's risky. We should very rarely go to zero. Seven, one. There's not much they can do here. Um, I'm probably just going to say we play Catelyn Stark because she is the worst of our cards. Uh, if your defense order in the embattled area, its value is doubled. Eh. Eh. Like, it's pretty situational. So I think we play Catelyn. There's nothing they can do here. Yeah, they play one of their lower cards. Because they know they're going to lose this. We get Seaguard. Ah, they moved up to here. That's a bit of a risk for us. Ah, and they're attacking. Right. And they're supporting. Yeah, here's a bit of an issue. Uh, we could play Eddard Stark. However, they would probably then just... Play their four. They don't know what we're playing, but they're probably going to play their four to guarantee this. Sea guard is important. It doesn't matter if I defend either and like protect us from casualties because we're going to lose the siege engine as soon as we retreat. I think I have to play Eddard Stark and risk them not playing their four. If you were attacking all of your participating ships, add an additional plus one combat strength. They had a supporting ship. So, sadly, we have lost Seaguard. Uh, however, we can choose to retreat to Moat Kaelin, which will help us defend. So, at the end of the day, I should have seen that one coming. I think what we will do here, however... Now, I could have moved you into Moat Kaelin. Then we could have maybe done something fancy. Um, what I think we need to do is maybe grab Mountains of the Moon. Because that will give us more supply. Yeah, we'll do that. Now, our supply doesn't update immediately. It updates when you get this card. Great. Uh, reconcile armies means that if your supply has gone down, you'll have to kill units off. So, suddenly... Hey, that's a lot better. Each player collects one. Okay, we're not going to get much from that. We got one. Yay. Greyjoys are on eight. And then we get an effect that says March plus one orders cannot be played. So, that's marching around. Okay. Well, we lost Seaguard. I know what we're doing in Winterfell. We're going to be trying to get more troops. Because now we have the ability to muster troops. We need to use that. I kind of want to take Seaguard back, but I don't think there's a way to really do it. We still know they've got a four card that I'm not particularly happy about. Um... I think we take the Stony Shore, guys, and we go up to Castle Black. And maintain control of Stony Shore, which will cost us power, but we can then get power at Castle Black next turn. We're going to be very low on power. The risk is a huge risk. Uh, I think we do support order here. And then in Mountains of the Moon... We could do a raid... Which would maybe remove anything they play on River Run. Oh, no, they can't attack us here because of the red. Yeah, we're actually by ourselves. Hmm. We could just go Consolidate Power. It'll give us one power because there's no power symbols in here, unlike the twins or at the Eerie. But we could. It's defended. 
yeah, I guess that's what we do. It doesn't... No, uh, nothing does anything else. Um, at Moat Kalen, I think we need to play defensive. And just hold on to it for now. As much as I'd like to push out, we can't. I think we're going to start splitting up the fleet in Bay of Ice. We'll take the Sunset Sea. Them orders. Okay, they have an attack here, or at least a movement. Um, raid orders. House Martel is doing stuff. House Tyrell is doing stuff. They have a support. They have an attack. I control the sea, so they can't go through the sea. That's the important thing here. All right, they're fighting the black water. And... Ah, you just ability to change the card out. Which changed up to a losing card? Oh, you may force an opponent to play a different house card. Ah! Tyrion's ability is pretty useful. Okay, um, I know I'm doing it at the Stony Shore. There's no way they can really attack me without getting rid of my boats. Um, their boats aren't moving. So, um, don't, I don't want to attack them either. They're very strong. We're just going to go straight up to Castle Black with you. Yes, I'll confirm that. Yes, I want to keep hold of this by spending a power. Okay, they're moving to Seaguard. Fair enough. Oh, Lannisters and Tyrell broke their pact. It rarely happens, but it did. And also in such a huge way, Gregor Clegane is going to cause uh, three casualties? Well, there's only one dude there, mate. Okay. Um, I'm going to move one of our ships to here. This is incredibly helpful because you see the support order? We can get rid of that with a raid order from here. So no longer will the boats be able to support them. Okay, um, let's get one power. We have so little power, like 11 for the Greyjoys. Um, as much as I'd like to get more power, I need to muster. We could just go straight Siege Engine. I don't feel that really is going to be a good move. We could put a ship in the Shivering Sea, and that would allow us to then send units all the way down to the area and stuff. Also, I don't think that's a good move. I think we might just be better off producing two footmen or something. Or maybe just a footman and a ship. Because then we can have a footman go to car hold, grab that power. Yeah... And then we can free the knight up. Actually, if we build two two footmen. Yeah, if we build two footmen, we can put a footman in car hold. We can have the knight move down, which is more powerful. And we can keep a footman here. So, footman. Oop. Footman again. Immediately shuffle this card, discard, and redraw. Okay. Adjust supply track, reconcile armies. Feared on the influence track. That's the one I feared. Uh, I only have one power. I have to bid zero. Greyjoys are like, yeah, mate, I've got all the power. So Greyjoys are going to be picking who wins ties, which sucks for us. Because they're going to put us last. Uh, again, I have to bid zero on this, which means the Greyjoys are going to win ties of us. God damn it. This is the problem with having so much power. And then the question is, do we bid on this? I think we have to. Okay. That was very, very useful. It means we can actually spend special orders. If we bid zero, we'd have been tied with these guys. We'd be no special orders. 
Like, we wouldn't be able to play any more powerful ones. So, I'm glad we did. It might not be us in the lead, but at least we're position three. Two special orders per turn. And defense orders cannot be played this turn. That's worrying. I was hoping we could defend. Okay. I would very much like that to be a support order. I'm very much going to make this a raid order. However, I'm not going to pick the fancy one. Um... think you're going to be a support order because you're adjacent to here so we can like oh maybe we could go raid be able to knock something off if they're doing like a support or something yeah they won't be able to do a support there's no one to support okay um you're a get consolidated power stuff you're a get a consolidated power stuff you you can't defend We could consolidate power. Slash muster. Yeah. And then here, I'm gonna say we just play the march order. Okay. Okay, they are attacking at minus one. They're attacking there at zero. Unfortunately, Greyjoys have all the power here. So they're picking, like, what to raid and stuff. And then it goes down in order. Lannisters. It'll get to us eventually. Okay, so here's our raid order. We can raid the Tyrells. I don't want to do that. I want to raid the Greyjoys. We can basically cancel out this support order. So they're no longer going to be getting that plus one support, which is helpful. Okay. What are they doing there? Hmm. Okay, Harren holds a bit of a fight. Kevin Lance, if you're attacking all your footmen, add an additional plus. Ooh. Kevin Lannis is not mad. Okay. Here's where we have to act, because we haven't got one movement order. Uh, we could maybe try and attack someone. I don't think it would really get us anything. It's a shame. We could actually really attack Seaguard this turn and have a good chance. Let's have a quick check. Would we have a chance? Yeah, no, they have Euron. There'd be no chance. Um, actually, maybe. If we'd have put a move order in here, we could have moved the knight into here and then had two knights to attack. Yeah, we'd have, we'd have been able to do it. We'd have been able to take Seaguard. Damn. We might still be able to take Seaguard. No, we wouldn't. We'd play the three, they'd play the four. They could also play the plus one from having the sword. And then they'd also win ties. Wouldn't matter. No. Okay. Uh, right. I want you to move to car hold. And I want this knight to move to Moat Kaelin. So we've got two knights in Moat Kaelin. Or I can move that knight to White Harbor. And then use the support from White Harbor to support with the full force of the knight. Knights are really good at support because you're supporting with the two without actually risking the knight getting killed. That said, White Harbor really isn't in threat at the moment. And this does allow us to push because we can threaten Seaguard. In fact, we could attack Seaguard next turn. I think this is the right move. And I won't move that last one because I want to give orders in Winterfell. Ah, they moved to Seaguard to support it. Yeah, so they just move back and forth because of the threat. Okay. 
We could go for power or we could muster. Um, there's no actual power symbol here, but mustering will get us a unit. So we're going to muster. Uh, we could put a ship. I'm going to probably say... Let me see. We have one, two ships. We get plus one for support. It wouldn't be enough to take the area. I really don't want to take the area because it gives us a barrel and a power. Um... We'll just play the Furman for now. Actually, the Narrow Sea does give us support for, like, if we want to move into the Twins. Yeah, I think playing a ship into the Narrow Sea is actually going to be a lot more useful for us. Mustering! That's helpful. Recruit new units. Thank you. Again, not... Only useful for us, as you can see, the Greyjoys are really enjoying it. Okay. So. First things first. What do I want to do? Winterfell, White Harbor, Moat Kaelin. We've got three options here. Uh, we could put a ship out here, which allows us to move units from, like, Winterfell directly down into here. Hell, White Harbor could do that. Yeah, White Harbor. Put a ship in the Shivering Sea. And then Winterfell could just produce a siege engine. And that siege engine could take down the Eerie. Because we'd have support. One, two. One, two, three, four. Yeah. We wouldn't even need pluses to do it. Moat Kaelin. Um, again, we could produce a ship. Which would make this ridiculously strong. In terms of support. But we're not really fighting over here. This is not like a hot zone for us. It might be in the future. It isn't now. I'm going to say we just grab a footman. Each player collects power for each power icon on the area they control. We get three. That's pretty good. Baratheon's on seven. Oh, hello. Martell wants to form an alliance. Um, I'm going to accept because I'm never going to fight Martell. The holder of Valerian Steel chooses one of the following. Defense orders cannot be played. March plus one orders cannot be played or no restriction. Yeah, they went no restriction. Yeah, Greyjoys obviously want that. Um, right. So we want this to be a support. For now, we're just going to say support at zero. Because that will give us plus two power. If we attack with the siege engine. I say we probably want to attack the siege engine and the footman. That way we can then move the siege engine out next turn and still have control of this. It's either that or we like move you in. But that means we see control is crossing. And that means the Brathians can walk in. So I say we probably want to attack with both. That can be an attack zero. Because that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It can actually be attack minus one. And that will allow us to travel through the sea zone. You can attack, attack through multiple sea zones, by the way, provided you control them. So we can attack all the way to the Eyrie. That means that we'll need to replace the unit that leaves here. So I'm actually going to place a attack plus one there. And then I want you to gain me power. This. Hell, we could have supported here and got even more power. I wonder if we can attack without using the siege engine. I wonder if that's possible. Uh, you should definitely be a raid. Because we're going to get rid of the support here. Um, Let's check. One, two, three. Or if we attack with a knight from this plus one and you're supporting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that would instantly be a win. Okay. Um, we could use the knight to do it. They have oh, a siege engine here. They're planning to take Moat Kaelin. I do not like that. Um, this support, I'm going to change this support to a support plus one. Yeah, 
Okay, that has to be the case. Um, you honestly would just kind of maybe do a raid or something. I don't know. There's, you cannot use consolidate on open sea. Like obviously, consolidate in the open sea doesn't really do anything. Um, we could defend, but they have to come through here to attack us, so we're not going to defend. I guess we'll just do like a raid. This open sea up here, I it doesn't really matter again. And then here, can't use a consolidate because I've already used my plus ones. And I've used my consolidates up here. Um, technically, I guess we could have you attack instead or something. We could do a zero move to the twins. Spend a power to keep mountains to the moon. No, we need to keep a unit there. If you leave a power, a power like controlling an area rather than a unit, people who you ally with can walk in. It doesn't matter. We need a unit there. Sucks. Um, we'll just give you a support order. That means you'll have one, two, three, four. A knight could still take that. Or a footman from here. Because it'll have the plus one order. Actually, the, that might be the better idea. Use the footman to take here. Use this to send the siege engine into here to replace it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that would do it. Yep, they're supporting again. They're attacking with minus one. Interesting, attacking with minus one. That's a choice. Okay, we're going to cancel the support in Iron Man's Bay. Like, Iron Man's Bay is amazing because it can support attacks into so many important places like River Run, Greywater Watch, Flint Fingers, and Defend Pike. But if we're here, we're just going to keep raiding it. Um, raid, you can't really raid anywhere, so nope. We march from Seaguard to Flint Fingers. We could maybe take Seaguard. We have to make a choice now. I think we can. At the very minimum, we can get them to waste a really good card. Okay, come on. Let's see where this goes. If you win this combat, gain two power. The Lannisters' only saving grace is that card, really. Well, and that they have easy access to River Run and High Garden, but eh. We've got so many enemies to fight, especially being next to the Greyjoys. Okay, 2v2. Friendly Baratheon taking the win there. Okay, this is where things get interesting. We could straight up march that siege engine down here, but I think we're better off by doing a thing here. So, we send a footman to here, which would have support. question is, do we move a knight or two knights? We won't have support. They won't have support either. Oh, can I not move to there? Okay. I can't move to there. Oh, I could move to Seagull. I thought we did that before. Can we not go there? Maybe we're only allowed to attack one place like Cancel that move and see if we can attack Seaguard instead. Yeah, you're only about to make one attack move. Well, maybe we save the Eerie for next turn. Because as much as I would like to attack the Eerie... Attacking and taking Seaguard right now... Would be amazing. We could destroy that Siege Engine. Because it can't retreat. They're defending everywhere else, so they wouldn't be able to take it back this turn. Maybe next turn. Uh, would be under attack by River Run. But it's potentially so powerful. And then, you know. Oh, we can attack with a siege engine this turn. Like, it's not ideal. Okay. 
We can roll a three. They would be able to roll a four. They could throw in a five because they could throw in the blade and then they'd tie. So they can get that to a six. If we attack with a two, a four wouldn't do it. We'd have to attack with a... They have to attack with a three or more. Which is a shame. Um... I'm going to throw both my knights into this. Oh, we've got a plus one. Wait, so... All right, let's do this again. They could make that a six. We're attacking with two plus one, so three. We would need to play a four, which we don't have. So we could throw in the knight. We'd need to play our three. Remember, we only have a three. But we could, if we played both knights, still get the win with a two. Okay. Yes, we're playing both knights. It's a risk. And I'm also going to say... I'm going to play this unit back up here. There's a reason for that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can move those two down to the Eerie. I don't want the siege engine getting stuck down at the Eerie. You never get them out because you end up just being like, I just want the power. Um... Yes, confirm much. Right. They can get that to a six. We need to play a two. We play Great John Umber. Bruce, you need to lose. If you lose this combat, return your entire house card. It's great. Bruce Bolton is a fantastic card. Otherwise, you have to mill your entire deck, which isn't a deck, I guess. It's just a hand, but whatever. You have to mill your entire hand to get your hand redrawn. With Bruce, you can, as the North, just redraw your hand by losing a fight. We don't want to lose this one, so... Uh, they played a two. Fair enough. They knew that that was a done deal. Fine. Or they defend because of the castle. Still, we destroyed a siege engine. Which means they retreat to the twins. Ugh. Okay, they did retreat to the twins, which is smart. Because that means that they can threaten Mo Kalin from there. Which leaves me in the unenviable position of having to do this. We send you down to here. Long way to go. And then we also send you down to Mo Kalen. Because we have to defend it against the twins. However, that unit is no longer supported. So it will be able to retreat to the fingers. And then it will be stuck. Um, we'll confirm that. Okay, there's our support. Fantastic. We now own the Eerie. Okay, nothing happens last day of summer. Then we build on the influence track. We have the most influence right now. And then the Wildlings are attacking Westeros, which is unfortunate because uh, we need to spend our power. Yay! But considering this episode is pretty long already, I'm taking it deliberately a little bit slow. I'm talking through moves. I know I'm also going kind of quick instead of just talking through everything at length. Hopefully that's okay. Um, I'm going to have to call it here. In the next episode we'll do we'll do the second half we'll do the late game which is gonna be turn six through ten i'm gonna start talking about like what the victory condition is and what we're aiming for we've got a reasonable hold considering we lost the battle for sea guard early on i think we've done pretty well to pull that back we now own both sea guard and the eerie which are important places for us um so we'll probably do another video where i talk about the late game i'm then gonna do a video where i'm not gonna really talk through how the game works at all so if you're interested in that you like it for that. If you're interested for the more of me talking through things because I want to explain how the game works, you can check out the next video as well. But I've been Antrilisium. Remember, this is a sponsored video and there will be a link down below. Hopefully, uh, you want to go check that out. You can do so. Um, it's a perfect game for social distancing. If you're interested in strategy board games, I would say I recommend it. I might be biased because I'm being sponsored so you can make up your own mind. 
like subscribe comment down below let me know what you think it's also really good to gauge that on new videos new games and also because it's a board game i'd be interested to know what you folks like i i like digital board games generally um they make it a lot quicker than me having to figure out the exact rules and also set up but until next time stay shiny